Come and check the calendar. This is Eric Chilton with Chad Silver, Lauren Coleman, and Jalen Gilkey. Hello, everybody, and good afternoon to you. Whether you're watching on Firestick, Roku, and WF1 News 2 app, no matter how you watch, we're glad that you're here with us. Yeah, this isn't just a show that you watch, though, like all those yeah. other shows. You can head over to the News 2 <laughs> Facebook page and jump on the live stream. Let us know what you think about today's stories. Lots to chat about today, including coronavirus. The U.S. hit a grim milestone as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. 18 months into the pandemic, and data shows one in five Americans has died due to COVID-19. This white flag display in Washington, D.C. pays tribute to those we've lost. The artist started the project last year and has now seen it triple in size as more people die from the virus. So here is where things stand with COVID-19 today. We've seen more than 663,000 deaths since the pandemic happened. There is hope and a way out of it. Health experts say vaccines are the way out of this and prevent most COVID-19 deaths. Tomorrow, an FDA advisory board will meet to discuss data surrounding a third booster shot for the Pfizer vaccine. Meantime, our state continues to add thousands of new cases every day. The state says it learned of more than 7,100 cases in the past 24 hours. You can see it's on par with most of our latest numbers, but all of our numbers lately are higher than the numbers that we saw just two months ago. For example, in late July, we were adding as few as 1,400 new cases daily. Now, the highest was last Saturday when we topped out at 11,000, the second highest number we have ever seen. As we get into fall, we're hoping to see our COVID-19 numbers level off and drop again. But at the same time, many people may be confusing COVID symptoms with symptoms related to allergies. WFNY News 2's Jalen Gilkey is here to clear up the confusion. Jalen. Well, coughing, congestion, and a sore throat all can be symptoms for both COVID-19 and common seasonal allergies. Today, we spoke with Atrium Wake Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist Infectious Disease Expert, Dr. Christopher Ull, to help us explain the difference between the two. So the difference, allergy symptoms and COVID symptoms, it really hasn't changed much. So go ahead and explain it for us, Dr. O. Um, just nasal stuffiness, particularly associated with itchy eyes and red eyes, that's more likely an allergy than COVID. The main symptom in vaccinated people is stuffy nose, sore throat, um, and loss of sense of taste and smell. So... Um, Allergies tend not to give you a loss of sense of taste or smell. But if you're not sure either way, there's only one way to find out for sure. If you got a bit of a cough and you got a sore throat, that's a little bit more likely to be COVID than an allergy. So sometimes they cross over a little bit. If you're not sure, get a test. Dr. Ole went on to say that if there's any doubt in your mind about whether it's COVID or your allergies, just go get a test. You can, find, you can schedule a test at several pharmacy health departments or special testing sites set up by Triad Hospital Systems. Jalen, thanks. And uh, I think allergy sufferers probably like to see the um, umbrella uh, yes. up by Eric Chilton, right? I was about to say this kind of tells the tale here of what's happening. It really should help us with allergies, with the shower activity that we're seeing out here. And even though it's, it's really kind of a you know, hit or miss across the area, we're just generally unsettled and lots of humidity, that's for sure. The good news today, not as warm as in days past. Let's take a look at some of our readings here. And, you know, comfortable. I mean, you look at the, we're in the 70s for the most part, 77 in Greensboro, Burlington 79. We've got 78 for Winston-Salem and High Point and uh, 79 too headed north toward Reedsville. In the south, you're still looking at upper 70s, but we do have an 81 there as you head down toward Sanford in Lee County. Uh, tonight, 67 degrees, lots of cloud cover here. Uh, mostly cloudy tomorrow, still a chance of an isolated shower or storm, but temperatures are still good, right? 82 degrees. Now, it's a little misleading. You know, lately we've been fairly warm for a while, and our normal high this time of the year should be around 81 or 82, right in there, that neck of the woods, but most of the days in our seven day are warmer than that. You can see the light rain and I can attest to that firsthand. It is very light, just kind of drizzle here or there. That is likely to stay with us for a while because you see that whole pattern really all across the southeast is generally unsettled. Sandwiched between two low pressure centers, but we're just left with a lot of humidity across the region and that doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. So let's check the numbers then. We'll go from 82 up to 85 as we head into your Saturday. The warmest day of the next seven is Sunday at 87. Now rain chances is a 30% chance today, tomorrow, 20% Sunday. We dry out though, Monday, Tuesday. You talk about allergies, that's not a good 
pattern right there for allergies for us because sunshine and fairly dry, that's not good. But 85 Monday, 84 Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, the fall equinox is on Thursday. Look for a high of 84 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Let's get to your four to five roundup today. Derek Chauvin, the former police officer convicted of killing George Floyd, pleaded not guilty to civil rights charges connected to his interactions with a 14 year old boy. Chauvin appeared in court virtually this morning. He's facing civil rights violation charges for allegedly holding his knee on a teenager's neck while he was handcuffed back in 2017. Investigators allege it's similar to a technique used on Floyd. Earlier this year, a jury convicted Chauvin of second and third degree murder and Floyd's death. We're learning new details about hundreds of Amazon jobs coming here to the triad. We've learned the online retailer is looking to hire at least 400 new workers as part of a nationwide effort to expand its workforce. Most of the open jobs here in the triad are at the Fulfillment Center in Kernersville. Starting pay for the job is $15.50 an hour. The Carolina Theater in Greensboro will now require proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test for anyone coming to the theater. The new policy starts October 1st. Theater officials say you'll need to show the card or negative test results online with a photo ID. Another precaution in place, mask wearing. The theater falls under Guilford County's current mask mandate. Greensboro shoppers now have another store to fill up their grocery carts with. A new Aldi opened on Battleground Avenue this morning. The chain is not just expanding here in the triad, but they plan to open around 100 new stores nationwide in 2021. In addition to new stores, several older locations underwent renovations this year. So I got a question for you guys. Uh, are, do you shop at the same grocery stores every time or do you go to other places to pick up certain things? I am are you lo loyal? I am a loyal grocery mm -hmm. store shopper. I go to one place <laughs> all the time. But it's interesting because my sister is completely opposite. Uh -huh. She loves grocery shopping so much that she says she goes to five different what? grocery stores. Five. Because she loves it so much. So, so she <laughs> just like, it's like an outing for her. I'm yes. going to go to this grocery store today. Right. I'm going to go to this Do you store. do the same one, Lauren, or are you? I'm pretty loyal myself. I usually go to the same grocery store, but sometimes, you know, if I want to save, I might go get my produce and food from one store, but then yes. like my toothpaste and cleaning products from like another store. It's a so that's cheaper. what, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what uh, my wife does. She does all the grocery stuff and because and, uh, she knows I'm a horrible grocery shopper, but she'll get <laughs> meat from one store and then she likes produce from another. And so we really spread ourselves between Fresh Market, Harris Teeter, Whole Foods and Lowe's, like those are the ones that we go to, which nice. is pretty much everything. So, so you're basically like my sister. Yeah, because yeah. that's the, like five stores. Just go to all the grocery stores. See, I don't. I feel like when it comes to like the toothpaste and mm -hmm. the soaps and that kind of stuff, I feel that I can get a better deal on Amazon, and so I don't oh, buy any of those things true. in grocery stores. He's right. I get all those things off Amazon. Maybe I need to do that. I don't do as much online shopping as I should. I like to just get in and out, but that's a good idea. But then there's the trade-off too, depending on where you do go to shop locally. Is it a local store and are you, you know, not spending money there, but you're spending it on Amazon. So Absolutely. that's the trade off. Something to think about. Yeah. Let us know on Facebook. Are you a loyal shopper?
The pandemic has created a lot of uncertainty for triad artists due to business closures and canceled events. One local artist continues to bounce back. She's used the last 18 months and personal experiences as motivation for this year's Winston-Salem Fashion Week. Art is more than just creative expression for Antonita Waples. It's a lifestyle. As a multimedia artist, my job is to create beautiful things to put into the store and to get other artists involved so that we can build the art economy. She's the co-owner of Kindred Spirits in downtown Winston-Salem, a retail boutique that sells fine art, jewelry, holistic healing herbs, and more. Wable says the business continues to bounce back after briefly closing due to COVID-19. However, on a personal level, I've been struggling to heal from two traumatic brain injuries, one that I sustained in 2016 and the other in 2018. So doing all this work and managing it on top of like medical appointments, it's just been a lot to um, manifest. Despite these obstacles, she continues to create. Her designs will be featured in this year's Winston-Salem Fashion Week. And there's some beautiful large format paintings on fabric. So you'll be able to see some really beautiful renderings, some portraiture um, on the runway, including a really beautiful painting of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and a really lovely painting of Simone Biles. This year's theme is all about the 80s and 90s, with a focus on upcycling and sustainable fashion, an art technique Wapel says she's inspired by. So for the last four years, all I have done is create upcycled artwork. So painting plates, painting old computers, painting broken TVs. Winston-Salem, the city of art and innovation, a title Wapel says Fashion Week truly embodies. Winston-Salem Fashion Week kicks off tomorrow night at 6.30 at the Wake Forest Innovation Quarter in downtown Winston-Salem. The showcase will end on Saturday the 25th. For details, just look for this story on our website. All right, so in case you didn't know, next week is National Dog Week. So we went to the experts trying to give us a little guidance here. Of course, we all love our dogs, but experts say we may still be neglecting their needs unknowingly. I spoke with Sky Linfoot of uh, Border Collies, and she says really mental stimulation for a dog is just as important as medical care. Playing different games, um, hiding treats. There's a couple different um, puzzle feeders and that sort of thing, as well as um, you'll see uh, you can hide some treats certain places and help and guide the dog to try to find them. Um, and training a lot of uh, you can spend five minutes a day working on training either your already trained tricks or new tricks that the dog can learn. Um, and that mental um, stimulation does help. And now there are some health issues that a lot of us may overlook as well, especially when it comes to walking your dog in urban areas. Closer to city locations, making sure that their paw pads are safe on that concrete. Um, we've always seen issues uh, with the concrete and other um, hard surfaces just being really hot and dogs actually burning their paw pads on them. Um, and so making sure that either they have booties, they have paw protection, or they're walking more on grass. Linford says it's always important just to remember there is more to raising a pet than just loving your dog. And I have actually seen a dog who had burned their pads Ooh. on uh, sidewalk and pavement. We, we don't think about it because you've always yeah. seen, but um, it, it's the prolonged exposure mm -hmm. to it that causes the problem. I um I would love to have a dog, um, Me too. but I the the problem is is I I y'all my cactus died the other day. Oh, like, how do you can't keep a cactus? I cannot even keep a cactus <laughs> alive. So how how am I supposed to leave, yeah. you know, keep something alive that's breathing? That's, <laughs> that's true. That's no good. Well, it's like when I was you know when I was single, I remember I, I don't think it was fair sometimes for my dog because you're gone so much. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you got to dedicate the time. Yeah, to it. absolutely. It's a lot of responsibility. What's really interesting about the story was the whole mental stimulation yes. part because when I think of a dog, uh, I think of like walking the dog or maybe making sure it has a good diet, but not like the mental part. So it's kind of like having a kid, like making sure you read to them or true. that they practice coloring. I just, I don't think I've ever heard people talk about that. So there before. are those little things that you can put treats in. There are brand names. I think Kong. Some Kong, when yes, you put the yes. peanut butter in it. Yes. I have seen that. So, and that she said is really good. And she, oh. if you hide those around the house and then they start in, like in, in nature, they would be hunting for their food. So 
Very interesting. That's what you do. A Kong. A mm. Kong. I'm gonna do that for you, Chad. I'm gonna put like just a charms blow <laughs> pop behind this. Set right. Looking for just it. have Chad go look at it. He's sniffing around the studio. That'd be awesome. We'll take a short <laughs> break. We'll be right back. Go get him, Chad. Go get him. Where? 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 <laughs> The future may seem far away, but it's always only a day away. As Coach Lamont explains in today's U-Day message, the time to start living for the future is now. Most people believe that the future is this mystical era, an unforeseen vast of time awaiting our arrival. I don't know, maybe you're one of those people. Well, the truth is, the future is not outside of us at all. The future is within us. It is developed by the decisions that we make today. Now the future you is patiently observing your next move, cheering you on to make the right decisions that will prepare you into an amazing and empowered life. The future within is excited for you to pull it out of your spirit and step into it. Now will you face challenge and maybe fear of uncertainty? Maybe, but remember you were created to overcome, therefore you automatically win. So smile and get your future on. Trust yourself, your future you is depending on you, so don't let you down. This is Coach Lamont reminding you to have your best you day. I'll see you in the future tomorrow. Got some rain coming down out here in the Weather Garden, and uh, it's very light, and it's been like that, kind of drizzly, a light shower here or there. Just generally unsettled, we're gonna stay that way uh, maybe for another day or so. Overall, though, take a look at some temperatures. Um, not, it's not bad, right? The cloud covers kept everything down for us. And honestly, we were talking about allergies a short time ago. This is what we need to kind of keep that pollen down. 77 degrees right now in the triad. If you head to the east, we're still in the low 80s, though, for Wilmington and also Elizabeth City at 82 and 83, respectively. Columbia, South Carolina at 78, Charleston at 72. And it's uh, in the upper 60s in some of the mountain communities. Really comfortable. Um, here's the rain, and you can see a little bit of that over our area. Look how it looks like it's just kind of diminishing in coverage. And as we go out to a wider shot, there's more of this to the south. So a lot of this, all of this is drifting to the east and a little bit to the north. So we'll deal with these showers. It's still only about a 30% chance of a scattered shower here or there. It's not a, a long washout, a big rain event, but just being generally unsettled like that, 
you're more than likely to run into, if you're traveling anywhere, you'd run into a little shower or two. Caught between a couple of low pressure systems, there goes one off the coast there. The humidity is just going to stick around for a while, probably through the weekend, I would think. So we don't really see major changes coming up in that, except our temperature does go back up again in the next couple of days. So isolated showers tonight, more clouds than not. Uh, not a, again, not a heavy rain, but 67 will be that overnight low. So that's kind of your step out temperature tomorrow morning. 82 the high tomorrow with that isolated shower or storm and uh, not a great chance. Again, we're hovering in that 30% neck of the woods for a shower or two. Temperatures going up a little bit. So we'll go from uh, upper 70s today to 82 for your Friday. Weekend, not bad, 30 and 20%. We can live with that for rain chances. That's kind of normal. We are a little warm though, 85 and 87. Look in the top right corner of your screen there. We should be in the low 80s. Then next week, we dry out a little bit, partly cloudy. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 85, 84, and uh, the fall equinox. There. You can see that's coming in with 83 degrees chance of an isolated storm. That would be Wednesday evening, and then again Thursday morning, but a cooler high as fall comes in, 78 degrees. Eagle. Eagle. Alba Albatross. All right. <laughs> there's a national day in museum for so many things these days and toys are one of them oh yeah there's actually a national toy hall of fame it pays tribute to iconic toys so it's almost time to add a few more toys to the hall of fame so hmm. let's take a look at this this year's there are 12 nominees so here are the first four battleship that's a classic just billiards in general. Cabbage Patch Dolls, I didn't know that was still a thing. Uh, and the Settlers of Catan board game, I'm not familiar with that mm, one. I think either. I would too, billiards, right? Out of that four, what, what would you pick out of each I'd four? I'd go Battleship, Battleship that one, yeah. and yeah, billiards. Yeah, Battleship was a good one. Uh, so here are the next four. We have Fisher Price's Corn Popper. I had one of those as a kid. That's a staple. Uh, American Girl Dolls, my sister had one. Fire Engine Toy Truck, 
And Mahjong. Mahjong. I think it's Mahjong. Mahjong, Mahjong, right? Mahjong. Okay. Yep. That's how you say it. Uh, I'd probably go with the fire truck. I've never played that the Mahjong game. I haven't either, but I, I think that Fisher Price thing. I don't yeah. Every kid has it. Kid. Or their baby <laughs> book. There's probably a picture of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, and the last four here Masters of the Universe toys, <laughs> a pinata, the game Risk, and sand. Just saying. <laughs> pinata. Sand. I want all the candy. Um, I do like a pinata because I like what's in it most of the time. <laughs> um, but sand is always fun. Risk, I used to play Risk when I, I was a like kid. I did like Risk. But yeah. like, I feel like I'm still playing the same game from 30 years ago because the game never, never, ends. never ends. What is Risk? Oh, it's your like countries, you're trying to take over the world basically. But oh, it is okay. a game that puts Monopoly to shame when it comes to the time it takes to play it. <laughs> My goodness. It takes forever. All right, so right now the public can vote for their favorite toy, the one they think should join the Hall of Fame. Voting is online on the National Toy Hall of Fame website. It closes next Wednesday, then a committee will look at it, all the votes, they'll discuss all the options and announce three new Hall of Fame inductees on November the 4th. Um, are cool. there any any um, toys that weren't on the list that um, was like your favorite when you were a kid? But I'll bet it's already in though. But Etch a Sketch. That's yeah. What I, I had one of those. I was more of an yeah. artsy kid, like into arts and crafts and things like that. So I didn't play with as many like dolls and toys. Spirograph. You remember Spirograph? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cool. Etch a Sketch is definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, I would say the Fisher Price basketball hoop. If that's not in yet, <laughs> that's here's true. my vote. Um, I would say um, Light Bright. Remember yes. that? Light okay. Bright. I yes. love yes. oh. the Light Bright. I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe I was just into the lights, but it was uh, such yeah. a cool I thing. I love that. I got a second nomination. I don't know. It might be in there. I didn't do enough research. But G.I. Joe? Is G.I. Uh, Joe not in the Toy Hall of Fame? Oh. Yeah. If he's not, then we need to recount some ta some votes. Did you guys have an Easy Bake Oven or have a sister that had one? My nope. daughter has one. Mm -mm. Yeah. Now they still make I it. had tanks. Tanks. That's what I had. Nice. <laughs> Um, so the one game that I hated, but I always wound up playing it, was Operation because I hated oh, the noise. Oh, I love Operation. The noise that the it made if it made it if you hit the sides. Ugh, ugh. That was a good one. I hate that. Think about that. We'll, <laughs> we'll be right back. Right. Those are bringing back so many memories. I no, forgot seriously. about some of these toys. So maybe Say la vie. Say la vie. There you go. Say la vie. Hello, friends. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a classic combination. Say la vie.
Welcome back to the 4 to 5. Eric Chilton here along with Lauren Coleman and Chad Silver. Oh yes, welcome to Fun. the 4 to 5 four on to five. The, the, what do we call this? Uh, Friday Junior. Friday That's right. Eve. Friday Eve, love that. You're watching on TV, maybe you're watching online. Fire Stick, Roku, we are all over the place. Many ways to watch us, and we're also on Facebook, so go ahead and head over there and talk with us on our live stream. We want to hear from you. All right, uh, one of the big stories we're following today, it has been a tense day for students and staff at two Rockingham County schools. Law enforcement created what they call a secured perimeter around Holmes Middle and Moorhead High as they investigated a threat. It's important to note the threat is over and all students and staff are safe. Here's what we know so far. Eden police were talking with a middle school student. No one was allowed in or out of the school while the perimeters were in place. Both perimeters were lifted by noon and detectives were still investigating. No other details about what exactly led to the students questioning or reason for the perimeters were released. Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools will put a new clear bag policy in place for anyone attending a game or school event. Yeah, this rule goes into effect tomorrow. They say it's not a direct response to any event, but rather something they'd been discussing for a while. This matches policies at many college and professional stadiums. Conversations surrounding school safety are constant, but increased following the deadly shooting at Mount Tabor High School. Police say a student shot and killed a classmate earlier this month there. The suspect is still facing charges as a juvenile, so we do not know his identity. Today, President Biden called on lawmakers to take action and put more money in Americans' pockets. The president is trying to get support for a $3 billion spending plan he says will bolster the economy, support the middle class, and lower inflation. Skylar Brand reports in Washington, D.C. President Biden delivered remarks on the economy Thursday afternoon and said it's time the rich started paying their fair share. The top 1%, for example, evade an estimated $160 billion in taxes that they owe each year. Not new taxes, taxes that they owe. The president met one-on-one -on -one with Democratic Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema Wednesday. Both have expressed doubts about the $3.5 trillion economic package which the president says is needed to bolster the middle class. We can invest in our people, giving our families a little help with their toughest expenses, like daycare, Child care, elder care, prescription drugs, health care. Democrats need unanimous support for the president's plan to pass because Republicans are unified in their opposition to the bill, saying the president's spending is triggering inflation. The amount of being spent by the Biden administration, the challenges to the work shortages, and making more um, inflation go continuing to grow. Inflation is a tax on all Americans. Americans are spending more at the grocery store these days. The Labor Department reported this week that Americans are paying 5.3 percent more this August than they did last August. Beef, pork and poultry prices saw the biggest spikes. A very small number of giant corporations now dominate the market, which gives them the ability to drive up prices because they face so little competition. Administration officials say the top meat producers are making record profits. But they're still paying farmers and ranchers the same prices. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. While consumers have seen some inflation, some prices have gone down. The price of eggs and many fruits and vegetables have dropped the past few months. All right, time now for your four to five roundup. First up, a fence is back around the U.S. Capitol building today. They put it back up as a safety precaution ahead of a rally planned there Saturday. Supporters of those charged in the January 6th riots are expected to rally there. The fence will come down afterward. We know who will be the new Jeopardy host at least through the end of the year. Actress Mayim Bialik takes over next week and will host through November 5th. She'll then split hosting duties with former contestant Ken Jennings. Bialik was supposed to share responsibilities with the show's executive producer, Mike Richards, until he left the show entirely following past insensitive comments. Elton John is postponing his European tour so he can have surgery on an injured hip. The 74-year-old was set to start his farewell Yellow Brick tour overseas this fall. Those international dates have now been postponed until 2023. He's still set to perform at the Greensboro Coliseum next April. A new tech startup is working to bring back the woolly mammoth. Strange, right? It's not the next plot to a Jurassic Park movie. The company called Colossal says it just landed $15 million from investors to work on gene technology that would bring back the animal from extinction. 
woolly mammoths have been extinct for 10,000 years, but the goal is to create new calves by 2027. This is, that is absolutely That's bonkers. That's crazy. So what would be the, per like why do they need to come back? I think so we could eat them. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> woolly mammoth I'm burgers? I'm definitely gonna be woolly eating a, a woolly, woolly mammoth burger. I mean, burger. I gotta tell you, so I read this article earlier today and there's a Harvard, Harvard genetics professor who says that this is completely possible. And mm. this company, so I don't know like, Apparently, there are no regulations that can stop companies from doing this, I guess. But bringing it back is interesting to me from a science standpoint. I would love to see one, but all you can think of is Jurassic Park. I mean, that's, yeah. those right. things are massive. They're huge, you know, bigger and, than elephants. And what a slippery slope. Yeah. So you bring back the woolly mammoth. What else are you the bringing pterodactyl back? The pterodactyl or <laughs> what, what are the other ones? Uh, Triceratops. Yeah. Oh, all of them. You rack. You bring a velociraptor scary. back. I am not sticking Ooh. around. <laughs> but could you imagine, I mean, where'd you even put these things? I mean, think yeah. about how big they are. And therein lies the Maybe problem. Maybe they'll just have a piece of land where they'll just roam. Or like farms. The, uh, yeah. I, I think they live all, like in the polar regions. They would be like where it's all icy. Okay. Okay, scientists, you know. But I'm going to eat one. Not the whole thing. I mean, <laughs> you these things are massive, pita? I'm ready for a burger. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a brontosaurus burger uh, yeah. like Fred Flintstone. How's the weather outside for grilling out children? Yeah, you know, you know, the woolly mammoth will not like it here. I will just tell you that right now. Yeah, it's too warm. And we've been actually abnormally warm for a while, right? So we've been seeing these temperature highs. I mean, one day, you know, this way early in the week, we're like 90. We should be at 81. That's our normal high. Today, uh, very cool. 77 for Greensboro, 78 in High Point. These are current readings, not high temperatures, although this is probably pretty close to the high for today. 78 in Winston-Salem at Walnut Cove, 79 in Mount Airy. Boone's at 69 degrees, very comfy there. And then uh, Galax at 74. So hour by hour heading into the evening, you do have a chance of a shower or two until even late night. I mean, look at that 2 a.m. We could see a little spit of rain here or there. I think that's kind of where we hover mid 70s for the first four or five hours, then maybe some lower 70s overnight. By tomorrow morning, we think we'll see upper 60s around 67 degrees. Unsettled weather and just scattered light to moderate showers. That's pretty much the rule from Danville all the way down toward Montgomery County and Troy. We're seeing that with the heaviest rains right now probably being closer to the Danville area and in Reedsville. You go out to a wider shot, it's more of the same as a couple of low pressure systems. We're kind of sandwiched between these two. The big story was not so much the heat. We may see mid 80s by the time the weekend's over where they're even 87 on Sunday, but that humidity just locks in and stays with us for a while. So don't uh, you know, get used to any type of uh, cooler or drier forecast because we do have humidity for at least the next three days, we think. Cloud cover tonight, pretty strong with those isolated showers. <clears throat> it's about a 30% chance for tomorrow. And that low will be what you see when you head out in the morning. So 67 degrees. Highs tomorrow, 82, pretty much where we should be this time of the year. More clouds than not, maybe a little peak of sunshine, an isolated shower or storm is possible. Again, we keep those rain chances at about a 30%. So hold that for Friday and Saturday. We'll go up to 85 Saturday. Warming trend through the weekend with the warmest day being Sunday at 87. We'll dry out Monday, Tuesday, and really even Wednesday. You can see that fall equinox there. And uh, just in time, it looks like the day after that, we'll see highs go to 78 with a chance of a morning shower. All right, check this out. Fried chicken skins. They're like pork rinds, but chicken with chili powder to give it a little kick. Then there was this sandwich with what they call comeback sauce on it. I had both of these yummies at a North Charlotte restaurant called Leah and Louise. Now, before I ordered, the wait person came to the table and said, this restaurant has a 23% service charge. So 21% goes to the server, you guys, and 2% go to the kitchen staff and managers. What do you think about this? I don't like it. No? It's pretty high. Um, I don't like it because, um, you know, we've talked about this before. When I was mm -hmm. in the service industry, I uh, performed, you know, as a server um, to get better tips. And I'm afraid that as soon as you start forcing people to pay the money that servers would normally earn, they're not going to give you as good of service. That's my same thought hmm. process about this as well. But I also think they could just pay their workers more, just give them a better um, base pay, hourly pay. 
So okay. we don't have to worry about this kind of surcharge. Well, this is one restaurant, although we have heard of other restaurants, right, doing similar surcharges like this. But recently, an entire chain started a surcharge. It's called the Cotton Patch Cafe. These restaurants are located in Texas. There are 50 locations. There are signs at the table that warn of a 5% surcharge added to each bill due to the long-lasting hardships faced by the restaurant industry. And I got to tell you, it's not the living wage for servers. It's other costs. When you see meat, corn, plastic prices jumping, you know, 100, 150, 200%, they have no other choice. So prices are up and they're passed down to the consumer. The surcharge on each bill is 5%. Customers say that amounts to about like an extra one or $3. Mm -hmm. All right, so first let's talk about them having the surcharge and them telling you up front. So um, in my opinion, I think that if, if they're going to require it for everything, they should just raise their prices because it's a little bit deceiving to mm -hmm. not find out until uh, you mm -hmm. sit down at the table that you're gonna be charged extra. I agree with that mm -hmm. too, because when that bill comes out and I see that extra percentage, I'm gonna be like, what? I wish I would have known this beforehand. Okay, now tell me, what do you think about just the amount, the 5%? Does it make or break it whether you go there? I mean, it's a dollar or three bucks. I mean, not that much? No, it, it wouldn't make it or break it for me. Same here. But you don't like the idea, period. Right. Okay, you can put in your two cents always. I'll be posting this on my Facebook page so that you can chime in. Welcome back. You know, in case you missed our first segment, next week is National Dog Week. So we're talking all things dogs today. And today in particular, we're talking about working dogs. Now, of course, they have to go through lots of training for this. You would guess that working dogs can do lots of things. They can be therapy dogs, search and rescue, bomb detection, even herding dogs. But Sky Linfoot of Kaikendal's Border Collie says the medical alert dogs are especially amazing. The medical alert dogs are able to signal to their handlers when there is a medical emergency happening within their body, whether that is um, seizures or diabetic alerts um, 
for blood sugars high and low or with their insulin. Um, and they're trained actually similarly to uh, bomb detection dogs or drug detention dogs where they use scent uh, capsules and work on their detection, scent detection for those hormones. So these dogs are so highly trained that sometimes they help those that aren't even uh, considered their owners or their handlers. There have been cases where um, I know medical alert dogs with the blood sugar high and lows have alerted their owners when the owners or their handlers actually aren't in a high or low, which is an interesting fact that you can see someone else in that vicinity is having a, a change in their blood sugar that they might not be aware of. Uh, her organization, by the way, Kaikendall's Border Collies, they train dogs for herding. So I asked you on Facebook, tell me your favorite dog breed and why. Lots of people had things to say on this. Vince said that I've had dogs my entire life, but the Golden Retriever is the most loyal and the nicest dog I've ever owned. Uh, Karen says Yorkies are absolutely the best. Angel Hernandez says Boxers. They are the funniest, so crazy, and we love their wiggle. <laughs> uh, Janet says, I love my dachshunds. I have three. I adore them because of their loving behavior and their tenacity. And yes, while they can be stubborn, they are super smart. Amy Burton says, Pomeranian. They are so sweet and loving. Rosie is my adorable little furball. And Bobby Odom, a regular in the four to five Facebook room, says, love them all. But my favorite is the Labrador. I love their gentle nature and they're also very smart. Everybody has their own opinion with this, but I will tell you that Labradors, Retrievers, and, and believe it or not, Yorkies were the most that I saw okay. of people posting on my page. Mm. Labs make for great family dogs. They do. They mm -hmm. really do. Um, I know you don't have a dog. I don't have one either, but I am in the market of thinking about getting one, but I would love a Pomeranian or, uh, or a Yorkie or a Beagle, just something small, I like small that I can keep too. on my lap, you know, not too much. I, uh, what are they called? French Bulldogs. They're cute. Little yeah. tiny. Oh. Yeah. See, I see. I, I like most every single dog except for the very small ones that all they do is yap. <laughs> rap, 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 rap. Like, I just, I can't stand that. Chihuahuas have a bad rep for that. Yes. Even though I know lots of people that have Chihuahuas and I think they're cute, but yeah. so they, they get a bad rep. I had a neighbor who had one and every time you walk past, it was just always going <laughs> yeah. off. Always. And we had a, um, our dog, our family dog passed away a couple years ago, but Arthur was <laughs> a uh, schnauzer the best and no shedding which i can't oh. stand uh, that i'm telling you that was a great dog i need to look into that because yeah. you know that is a, a hassle having a vacuum like constantly i had Isn't a sheltie like, once with long hair and I, I could stuff small pillows with what that dog would shed mm. it was really it was really bad wow <laughs> at least at least get furniture that matches the color of the oh <laughs> god <laughs> true true <laughs> so you don't have to. then your guest gets up i know that they're like <laughs> where did all this come from <laughs> Right. Uh, we'll uh. Tell us what your favorite dog is. Uh -huh. Remember Doug the Pug? Yes. Just do it like it's my B day. Do it, do it. Do it like it's my B day. Yeah, Carrie. Do it like it's my B day. Do it.
like the music. Does that little jingle put you in the holiday season? It may sound kind of wild here, but the countdown to Christmas is on. Yeah, can you believe it? Wow. It's just 100 days. Wow, right around the corner. So we asked you on WFNY News Facebook page, are you already shopping for gifts or maybe even listening to Christmas music? So uh -oh. here's what she said. <laughs> Melissa said, started buying stocking stuffers wow. a couple weeks ago. Cammy says, way too soon, LOL. Let's worry about Halloween and Thanksgiving first. And Jewel says, I Christmas shop at the beginning of the spring when all the winter clothes and prior year's Christmas leftover uh, stock are on clearance. Good Trisha idea. said, 101 days till I turn 38. No. <laughs> and John said, I'm just anxiously waiting for 99.5 to start playing that Christmas music. I can tell you that Tanya Rivera is probably not happy we're doing this segment right now because Why? she has a term she likes to use around this time of year. It's respect the turkey. She says we should not be doing anything Christmas related until after Thanksgiving. I can agree with that. I do think it's never too early to play Christmas music because I love Christmas music, but I do think you got to wait to put the tree up after Thanksgiving. And I just like, like when I see that graphic right there, yeah. it just makes me happy with the lights and the it ornaments. Does. It makes you think of hot cocoa. Yes. And and then, Eric, I'm sure people Hi, are constantly um, asking you, when's it going to snow? When's it going <laughs> to snow? Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> no snow, no snow. But I'm, the only thing I'm excited for this year, this, I'm coming up on four years working here, and this is the first Christmas that I have put in a day off request. So my plan is to go home and spend Christmas with my mom and my dad and my brother the first time. And uh, Tanya, Tanya, gets Tanya has just walked up on us. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Not, she she's not happy. Not she's happy not happy about the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, war I tried to warn them, Tanya. They didn't <laughs> listen to me. Respect the turkey. Uh huh. Here I agree with that because I don't want to get tired. Of, yeah. I want to keep Christmas so special, and um, but I do get a little uh, insider trading sometimes because I usually Ooh. know when 99.5 WMG okay. does that little thing because they let me come over sometimes and kick it off. Oh, so nice! I can't wow. say anything. I mean, are you, are you flexing on us, Eric? Is that what you're doing? I can't say anything. Is that what you're doing right now? Well, I can't say anything definitely because they do a contest and people guess what day it is. So oh, I definitely okay. can't say anything. <laughs> I'm like this. I can tell you weather though. Can I do that? Let's yeah, do that. you can. Let's talk about that much. That is free and not confidential. We are looking at uh, cloudy skies across the area, and uh, overall, now we're going to see the same kind of situation that we've. Uh, been seeing except we just warm it up a smidge. So we're in the upper 70s today. It was actually pretty comfortable out there. 77 in Greensboro. We've dropped a degree or so. Uh, 79 in Burlington, 78 Winston-Salem and High Point. Lexington at 77, Ashboro at 75. Hour by hour, I think we stay in the mid 70s most of the evening and then overnight we'll get down by tomorrow morning to the upper 60s. You can see the rain across the area, nothing severe in nature. In fact, it's actually starting to fizzle out a little bit. If you're in the Danville area, expect some heavier showers your way over the next 30 minutes or so, but it's still just unsettled all across the southeast. And as long as these systems kind of hang out, then we have that chance of a shower. It's just not a great one. Humidity will stay with us through the weekend at least here, and we'll see some changes by the time we get to next week. So looking at the seven day forecast, we've got 82 for tomorrow. Again, that stray shower chance. Hold that into Saturday, but rain chances drop to 20% Sunday and we warm up to 87. That's six degrees above normal. Hovering in the mid 80s and dry with partly cloudy skies Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday there, that fall equinox, 83 degrees. Maybe some late day showers there at 20% and we'll hold that into Thursday morning, but cooler weather, 78 with a chance of a morning shower and then partly cloudy by Thursday of next week. As more nurse help patients, nurses help patients. Hello, I have a mask on. Um. Hi there, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut. 
Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm walking, I'm walking with the Ten nine eight seven six five four three two. Starting tomorrow, if you go to a large event at Winston Salem for site. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can't believe it's almost here, just days away from a big day, a moment I've been waiting for for a while. Game day in Boone. App State is hosting its home opener against Elon on Saturday, and I can barely contain myself. I've already got my game day outfit picked out, the hotel's booked, game ticket purchased, and I've been practicing my typical App State chants. Okay, so maybe not the last one. Just know I'm so excited to get back to doing something that was so normal before the pandemic. People are often surprised when I tell them I didn't actually go to App State. See, years ago, a couple friends who are alums brought me to a game. I instantly fell in love. The atmosphere, the tailgating, the mountains for a backdrop, but most importantly, a team and a fan base that's desperately trying to prove that App State is a worthy opponent. I drank the Kool-Aid that day and I haven't looked back. Okay, so maybe I've been looking back on all the pictures of the previous games, remembering a time when I'd never even heard the word coronavirus. Do you ever think back to those days? I know you do, I certainly do. I want this weekend to feel like that. Sure, there will be masks and some social distancing, but I'm really hoping for a day when I can let my mind think about something else. That's just my two cents. And you're four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts right now. have witnessed Amazon blossom in the triad in recent years. Remember when their hubs in Kernersville and Witsit looked more like empty fields?